Washington Journal continues. Joining us now, Tom Fitton of Judicial Watch. He serves as their president. Good morning. Hey, Pedro. For those who don't know, what is your organization? Judicial Watch is a nonprofit educational foundation. Uh, the way we educate the public is by finding what the government is up to and telling the people about it. And we do that through a variety of methods, most chiefly the Freedom of Information Act, which allows you to ask the federal government, and there are state versions of this law, for documents about what the government is doing. And if they don't turn over the documents to you or withhold them improperly or otherwise just ignore you, you can sue in federal court. And so we've done that a lot. And that process is one of your claims to fame when it comes to Secretary of, former Secretary of State Clinton and her emails. Can you describe the role that you had as far as bringing emails to light? Well, we didn't know about Ms. Clinton's emails. No one did, uh, at least in the public. A lot of people in the administration did, but we didn't. And we were asking about things like Benghazi, we're asking things about uh, the special government employee status of Yuma Abedin, who was a top aide to Mrs. Clinton. And uh, they weren't giving us Clinton emails. We didn't know about them. In one case, we shut the case down. Uh, but we had this revelation through the Benghazi litigation uh, where we pushed for the documents, where they finally admitted that there were documents they hadn't looked at. And it turned out they told the New York Times it was Clinton emails they hadn't looked at. And that has led to all sorts of litigation. One of our cases was reopened. One of them is before Judge Emmett Sullivan, uh, which led to discovery and testimony by Clinton aides and uh, State Department officials, and led to some uh, uh, news last week about Mrs. Clinton's uh, testimony, at least written testimony, to, uh, ju through uh, Judicial Watch for the court. And if the headline from one of the stories that came out uh, said that the judge wouldn't allow uh, oral deposition of uh, Mrs. Clinton. Why were you looking for that? Or were you looking that for that particularly? Well, we were because it, it's, it's the best way to get information from someone. It's the question them under oath directly. You can follow up immediately. We were just seeking three hours of testimony. Other officials had already testified. And it was Mrs. Clinton's email system. So it, I think it was a common sense request to ask for her testimony. Uh, but the judge uh, realized that um, or recognized that she was a high government official and uh, there were less onerous ways to get the testimony. Uh, it's not exactly everything we wanted, but certainly it's more than what Mrs. Clinton wanted to give, which was to answer no questions under oath. Uh, but now she has to answer questions under oath through written form. So we'll be submitting questions to Mrs. Clinton. Um, hopefully soon, and then she has 30 days to respond. Now, will this information then come out to the public, whatever you learn from it before Election Day? Yeah, presumably. We tend to make all the information that we get and the testimony we get uh, public, and we'll be filing it presumably with the court as well. So it will be available to the American people. And so uh, ultimately, what are you looking for? There have been a lot of examinations of the email practices by Mrs. Clinton. What is it about this process that is, is different? Well, the Freedom of Information Act would have covered Mrs. Clinton's email. And uh, that email obviously wasn't searched, and it's been a big problem getting it completely searched. And as a result, uh, the courts have been upset by the way the law has been upended by the Mrs. Clinton's email practices. So why she did it, uh, her understanding of the Freedom of Information Act and things like that are very much of interest to the court, and those are the types of questions we'll be asking. Tom Fitton, our guest, to uh, join us to talk about the process that you've heard about and the information they find out from the emails. If you want to ask them questions, it's 202-748-8001 for Republicans, 202-748-8000 for Democrats, and 202-748-8002 for independents. Uh, one of the advocates, or at least the representatives of the Clinton campaign, was on the Sunday shows yesterday. Robbie Mook, the campaign manager, asked about the request made, the judge's decision, and about uh, Secretary Clinton providing those email and those responses. Want to get a response to what he had to say about it, and uh, we'll come back to you and get yours. Well, as you mentioned, uh, the judge has set a deadline whereby uh, the group in question needs to submit those. And, and when they're received, uh, I, I know that the secretary will get to work right away on answering them. You know, but, but let's, let's step back and look at the origin of all of this. The right wing and Republicans in Congress are not satisfied with the answer that the career professionals at the FBI and the Justice Department gave. They said there was no case here. This is just another example of a right wing group just trying to keep this, the questions coming and and keep this issue alive the american people have all the information uh the emails have been released uh they they have enough uh to make a judgment at this point we we at the campaign just want to move on and talk about the issues that people actually care okay. about uh in this election like jobs college so, affordability and health care that sounds like a no 
I, as I said, as soon as she receives the question, if the judge asks her to answer those questions, she will get to work right away on getting those questions answered. So some of the statements include not satisfied with the career professionals process, the people have all the information. How do you respond to those? Well, the courts don't have all the information. They, uh, the Clinton camp tried to make this argument through Mrs. Clinton's personal attorneys to the court, and the court rejected it. And uh, what I hear there is a little wiggle room as to whether they'll even respond as required by the court <coughs> or respond in a timely way without objecting in a way that makes the answers not available till after the election. I don't know. Will they let politics intrude on the process? You know, the other thing is that we have all these emails coming out that have led the Clinton Foundation to start, uh, or at least to say, eventually they'll stop taking foreign donations. Uh, that's the result of email disclosures made by Judicial Watch, and the emails have caught, forced them to do that. So the name calling is really juvenile and surprising from the campaign, and I don't know why they're screaming about Judicial Watch when it's the court requiring them to answer the questions. So when does Judicial Watch plan to submit the questions? Well, we've got to make sure we've got all of our ducks in a row. Uh, we don't want to just submit any uh, silly question to Mrs. Clinton, so we're going to look at those very carefully and uh, recognizing there's a 30-day window at least uh, for Mrs. Clinton to respond. So uh, we're, we're going to move quickly. And you seem to suggest that there's a process where she can hold off responding. Did I hear that correctly or not? Well, it looks to me like they're suggesting they may object to some of the questions and we may not get the answers that we're seeking and they may seek relief from the court, which would delay it. Uh, JudicialWatch.org, by the way, is the website if you want to learn more about the organization and its efforts. Uh, and Tom Fitton, our guest, he serves as their president. Let's hear from Pat from Florida, Cape Coral, Florida, Democrats Line. You are on with Tom Fitton. Go ahead. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, Judicial Watch, uh, thank you for your work. Uh, this, to me, is the fracking solvent on the cake of the Clintons. In any other realistic election 20 years ago, 15 years ago, uh, she wouldn't have a political life. There would be nothing that she could do. And besides the political life, she would probably be indicted for these things. I come from a background 60 some odd years ago of being able to vote for Dick Lamb and Patricia Schroeder in Colorado. And I went through the the lust in my heart president to the trickle trickle little star wars president to the sex acts playing president who put it down long enough to to sign nafta and put a line through glass siegel and here we come to emails that blatantly show that the foundation took foreign donations when she was secretary of state there's no way on god's green earth that it, this would have been allowed under in any other era the fish stinks from the head down. If she's trying to blame all the subordinates below her, whether it's the DNC or the foundation managers for doing this, this is going to be a disaster for politics in America. Thank, uh, you. thank you. We'll let our guests respond. I think it's interesting that there's a bipartisan concern about Mrs. Clinton, and uh, we've seen that a lot, that there are... are uh, uh, people of the left who are concerned about good government, who have concerns about Mrs. Clinton's conduct. Mrs. Clinton wants to put everything in the context of the election, and I guess that's her right. Our view is that the law, rule of law has to apply whether or not someone's running for public office, and Mrs. Clinton wants to use the excuse of her running for the presidency to avoid answers and to mischaracterize uh, those of us seeking legitimate question, uh, with legitimate questions as people out to get her. Uh, from Michigan, Independent Line, Steve is up next. Steve, good morning. Go ahead. Good morning. Uh, I was just curious. I wanted to ask this gentleman uh, what his career is to be after he's done uh, getting these emails released because, you know, everybody that crosses the Clintons either ends up, you know, dead from suicide or a plane crash. You better have some bodyguards. Oh, thank you. I'm not really worried about that. We've been battling uh, Clinton corruption since the 90s, as Mrs. Clinton will be happy to tell you. Uh, so, uh, you know, Mrs. Clinton uh, is uh, someone who scares a lot of people sometimes because of her misconduct, and, uh, uh, but uh, I'm not terribly concerned about that issue. Another Democrat from Maryland, Windsor Mill. Coleman, hi there. Yeah, hi. Um, I have a very straight question for this gentleman on the, you know, that is commenting here. Um, if Hillary Clinton was not running for the office of the President of the United States, would you guys be talking about email at this time, or this is just um, a way to derail the most important 
well-experienced, seasoned, vetted candidate for the office of the presidency of the greatest country on earth. And I need a straight answer. Are you just doing this so you can get a little bit more vote for Trump? And if that is the case, why are you guys not investigating Mr. Trump on the fake university that has no single merit to collect even a dime from any human being? My third question is, you're talking about Hillary Clinton and the records. Can you tell me one single thing Hillary has done that has given a trouble to any single human being or somebody who lost a job as a result of any of the conduct? And I'll take my uh, message from you. Thank you. Uh, I'm not quite sure if I heard the last question. Uh, about the timing of this, this is all a creation of Mrs. Clinton. Uh, we didn't know about these emails when we were suing. Uh, it was only the revelations last year that led to our uh, pursuing this, and we weren't even sure whether Mrs. Clinton was running for office, so that wasn't even on our radar screen. Uh, we understand that she wanted to withhold these emails because of the election, and our view is that we have a right to these records whether or not she's running for the election, and it's Mrs. Clinton who is trying to upend this system, and the, frankly, the State Department has been uh, slow walking the release of records, I think, to help Mrs. Clinton. You know, the election is intruding on the law, on the rule of law here, and we're trying to stop that from happening by getting answers in a timely way that we were, we should have gotten in some cases years ago. But Mrs. Clinton hit her emails, and these are the consequences. When you do something wrong, they come out at times that you think, uh, or her political supporters think, are inopportune, but they're purely uh, circumstances of her own making. Uh, the caller also asked about if any investigations are forthcoming on Mr. Trump and his university. Oh, we're always looking at Mr. Trump, and uh, you know we'll, we'll see what happens there. And I, I'm not, I don't buy much of the uh, complaints about his university. I see that as a one of these class action lawsuits that deserve a lot of skepticism. But you know he's testified under oath, so it, it wasn't a big deal for him to testify under oath. I don't know why it would be a big deal for Mrs. Clinton to testify under oath. So when you say you're always looking at Mr. Trump specifically, how? Uh, there are things we're looking at related to Mr. Trump, and we'll be pursuing them. His business practices? Just generally speaking. You know, as things come up in the news, we're looking at them and trying to figure out what it is that we can do to uncover government documents about his uh, operations or his conduct. Uh, Chicopee, Massachusetts, Republican line. Pam, go ahead. You're on with Tom Fitton. Good morning. Hi. I just wanted to thank Tom for um, everything he's doing and um, going after Hillary and whoever else he wants to go after and um, to tell him to stay safe. Um, one of the conversations, or at least the names that came up from the, the exchanges between the uh, Clinton, or the State Department and the Clinton, or the Clinton Foundation was the name Gilbert Shiguri. Who is he and why is he important to uh, this story? He's a Nigerian Lebanese businessman with, uh, who was accused of and had to pay tens of millions of dollars to settle charges of uh, criminal uh, malfeasance, who was a major donor to the Clinton operation at the foundation, also uh, pledged $1 billion for some type of Clinton Global Initiative program, which is also tied to the foundation. And the emails show that uh, he went through a Clinton executive, Doug Band, uh, to get uh, to try to get a meeting with the top official on Lebanon in the State Department, and I don't know if the meeting ever took place. The State Department and, and Shigori, uh, through intermediaries, suggest it never happened. But the fact is, he got special attention from the State Department as a result of this intervention by this Clinton Foundation official, with other former Clinton Foundation officials then working at the State Department, Cheryl Mills and Yuma Abedin. Is that a breaking of law or, or an act of wrongdoing, uh, this conversation, then? Oh, well, if it could be. It could be because Mrs. Clinton made some ethics promises uh, related to keeping a separate wall between the foundation and State Department business. I don't know if Band was acting as a foreign agent. Maybe he should have been registered. I don't know. And, uh, and it raises the question whether public office was um, illegally used to benefit a private entity. Or, or private individuals such as either Shigori or uh, the foundation. The Washington Post editors, when the Shigori name came out, said this as far as the process, said the behavior depicted in the emails doesn't appear to have significantly harmed the conduct of U.S. diplomacy, 
distracted from Mrs. Clinton's performance or even given evidence available as being particularly frequent. It certainly doesn't uh, seem enough to launch a criminal investigation. They had, as political scandal goes, this is middling at best. Well, you know, that's just, that's just a naive uh, point of view. Everyone knew policy and privilege and access was up for sale through the Clinton Foundation and by giving money directly to the Clintons during Mrs. Clinton's tenure. That's why Mr. Clinton's speaking fees skyrocketed while she was Secretary of State. That was money that went to their personal bottom line, and that's why the foundation greatly increased its activity. Uh, so uh, he, if they think poli politicians abroad didn't see this as an opportunity, either the Russians through the, uh, accessing uh, our uranium market, uh, the Saudis and others, uh, they're just being naive. And there's material that we'll be releasing today showing even the crown prince of Bahrain went through the Clinton Foundation in order to obtain a meeting uh, with Mrs. Clinton. Why is that important? Uh, because the crown prince of Bahrain is a, uh, essentially a foreign head of government, um, and uh, he couldn't get a meeting through official channels, and he had to go through the foundation's Doug Band to get a meeting with Mrs. Clinton, and he gave uh, pledged a billion dollars to the, Mrs., uh, the Clinton Foundation's global initiatives. Your organization also appears in court today. What happens today? Well, the FBI, as a result of pressure from, I think, our litigation uh, and through their criminal investigation, has uncovered emails that Mrs. Clinton tried to hide from the American people, deleted or uh, otherwise they were able to obtain, and they turned those over to the State Department, and the State Department's looking at all those emails, and they promised to give them to us because we have FOIA requests, Freedom of Information Act requests pending, and we were just told on Friday there are at least uh, 15,000 or so emails or documents that have been recovered or documents that weren't turned over by Mrs. Clinton, at least. And so we're going to try to get those documents and see where they are, how quickly the government's willing to turn them over to us, and we'll discuss that at court today. And is there any sense of the subject matter of these documents? Anything of particular interest to you? Well, we don't know what they are. There are Clinton emails that haven't been looked at yet by the American people, by the State Department, and so they're going to have to evaluate them under the Freedom of Information Act and see what's releasable. And so the debate is going to be how quickly they're released. But Talk it's a whole... It's a big number of documents on top. Just think, 30,000 or so were released initially by Mrs. Clinton. Mm -hmm. Now we're talking potentially at least 15,000 more emails being subject to review. Uh, Judicial Watch is uh, Tom Fitton of Judicial Watch, our guest. Uh, David from Vermont, Independent Line. Good morning. Good morning. How are you doing? Morning. Morning, Tom. Morning. I uh, just wanted to ask a question about Director Comey's uh, uh, decision uh, not to recommend an indictment when he said he couldn't show uh, intent uh, to mishandle classified information when we have a reported email uh, from Hillary Clinton to Jake Sullivan instructing him to remove classified headings and markers off classified information to send it to her knowingly uh, and willingly unsecured and, 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 and unauthorized uh, email server, which we know because the IG uh, of the State Department told us so. So she knowingly told her, her subordinate in the State Department to remove classified headings and markers off classified information to have it sent to her email server, which she knew she didn't have the permission to have. So the, the director says she didn't, you know, she claims she didn't send or receive class information, but we have an email showing that she was instructing her State Department to remove classified headings and markers off classified information to knowingly send it to her unsecured, unauthorized email server. How does that not show intent to mishandle class information and put it in an unsecured, unauthorized location? I agree with you. Mr. Comey's investigation and his statement uh, was half-baked uh, and uh, was political. Uh, he essentially concluded she violated the law, but she shouldn't be, she shouldn't be prosecuted for it because it wouldn't be fair. Uh, I don't understand how that should be uh, the appropriate response to uh, the misconduct your caller aptly describes. Uh, from Oklahoma, Democrats line. Glenn, good morning to you. Go ahead. You're on with our guest. Yes. Uh, really, I think that she's, Hillary is guilty. And it's the, the state, uh, the uh, federal government's helping her cover it up, especially Obama, because they want her in for president. He's, he's, he's up covering it up so she can get the presidential. That's Glenn in uh, Oklahoma, Mr. Fenton. I agree that the politics are intruding on uh, the administration of justice by this administration, by the State Department's decision making. It's intruding at the State Department. And oftentimes you see the Department of Justice and the State Department trying to defend everything Mrs. Clinton did, and it's widely inappropriate. Uh, Republican line, Tom. Good morning to you. Rest in Virginia. You're next. 
Good morning. Uh, I've been following Judicial Watch for a long time, and I appreciate all the work that you guys do. I'm just curious how you guys uh, get funded and keep, keep going and doing the work that you guys do do. Well, thank you very much. Uh, that's a nice uh, that's a nice question. Uh, we're funded with the support of the American people. We have over 400,000 supporters, and uh, you can follow us at judicialwatch.org and support us that way, and uh, it's individual donations. Uh, this is the Judicial Watch website you're seeing on the screen right now, judicialwatch.org is how you find more information about that. The Hill reports that um, a couple of members of the House are taking a look at a possible claims of uh, perjury. Uh, what do you think about the efforts by uh, the, judici the Judiciary Chairman and the Oversight Chairman on this effort? Do you think that will get ahead anywhere? Well, it's appropriate, but I don't know if it's going to get anywhere given the conflicted uh, Justice Department. Uh, Mrs. Uh, I mean, Loretta Lynch, uh, the Attorney General, after her meeting with Bill Clinton that caused so much consternation, said there was a shadow cast over her investigation as a result. She recognized that. That shadow hasn't been eliminated. Uh, and this is a good example of why Comey's investigation and the FBI investigation was so half-baked, because why didn't he look at the testimony he gave, she gave to Congress? Why wasn't that part of his investigation about the emails? He didn't look at it. And now they have to come back and ask him to do, uh, you know, investigation 101 that he should have done initially. Uh, I think a new Justice Department is going to have to look at this uh, the criminal conduct, the potential criminal conduct of Mrs. Clinton. Uh, this Justice Department, I mean, should do it, but I don't trust it's out any 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 fair minded that they'll be fair minded in investigating her. Uh, and by any new Justice Department, I mean one by Mrs. run by Mrs. Clinton or by Mr. Trump or whoever else. It doesn't matter. We have to have this expectation that there would be an independent, serious criminal investigation of these allegations. And uh, the independent part of it is going to be even more significant if Mrs. Clinton wins. But I mean, the expectation is, I think, from both political parties, is that, look, it doesn't matter who's in office, there's an expectation that an investigation be done that satisfies the American people that justice is being fairly administered. And Democrats and Republicans both have obligations to do that. And just because Mrs. Clinton wins, uh, we shouldn't assume that there won't be a further investigation of this by the Justice Department. Well, we'll hear from, uh, from Wisconsin on our Democrats line next. Diana, hi there. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I, I kind of think it's a sad day for our country when you have a group of people such as what you do, which I'm sure you mean well, but you question the integrity and the honesty of an FBI person who has been elected by Republicans and Democrats, okay? You question everything. The only thing you don't question enough of, as far as I'm concerned, is Trump, okay? If he is supposed to be president, why are you not pursuing his taxes? Why are you not looking into sexual allegations? Why are you not, why are you dismissing this university thing? That's a ripoff to the people. I mean, if you believe in equal, for both sides, okay, then you should be pursuing as strongly as you are um, all the questions that people are throwing out there about Trump. And, and you're looking at the screen right now like you're smiling, like this is so funny. It's not. I mean, this is an important decision for the people in this country. And I think that you need to take as many, uh, as many um, oh, days or months or years or whatever that you have since 1990 you said you've been following clinton and on one on one side of your face you say that and the next side you say um well we just found out about this in this past year well you can't have it both ways i mean you can't say you've been, been pursuing her since 1990 or both of them since 1990 and then just recently find out this or that but anyway what i'm getting at is spend a lot of time on Trump, please. Okay, we'll let our guests respond. Well, you know, Mrs. Clinton was Secretary of State. We have this vehicle to access information. And, you know, my view is that we don't just go after someone or make equivocations between conduct simply because uh, one may like or dislike a politician. Uh, talking about Mr. Trump's university issue uh, may be interesting in a political fight, 
But our issue right now is whether or not the rule of law was complied with by the administration of this United States of America, which is the government running this country now, and by a powerful public official, Hillary Clinton, who was Secretary of State. Mr. Trump was never a government official. So it's much harder to get information about his conduct through these processes that we're using uh, than it is Mrs. Clinton. You know, during the Clinton years, when we first started, we were founded in 1994. Uh, we used the Freedom of Information Act, and people said, well, we're anti-Clinton. And then the Bush years came, and we sued George W. Bush's administration twice as much as we sued the, Bush, uh, the Clinton administration for information. We took Dick Cheney all the way up to the Supreme Court. So believe me, things will, uh, depending on how the elections come or, or uh, turn out, uh, we're going to continue our government accountability activities no matter who's in office. And we're not naive uh, that a change in party will lead to a change in the culture of corruption as significant as many Americans uh, hope and expect. What kind of information were you looking for? from in the Bush administration and with the former Vice President Cheney? Well, with Dick Cheney, we challenged uh, the administration's secrecy on the Energy Task Force, which is kind of a, uh, you had to be kind of a policy nerd to even remember it these days. But, uh, you know, he brought in all these energy lobbyists and all sorts of people to discuss energy policy. And we thought those uh, operations and those meetings should be more open to the public. And we had litigation, actually, before Judge Sullivan, the same court who were before now, by the way, a judge appointed by President Clinton himself. And uh, we fought and won and lost. And uh, we actually lost before the Supreme Court. Uh, but we got tens of thousands of documents out of the administration. Uh, and it was a pyrrhic victory for George Bush. And it actually led in part to him actually signing uh, a change in the Freedom of Information Act to make it more, uh, 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 make government more open uh, because it, uh, it was such a negative for him. And there was good reason President Obama ran to be on um, being the most transparent president in American history, or promising to be, uh, because he saw the distaste people had for Bush secrecy. And in fact, unfortunately, it turned out uh, President Obama has been about as secretive as you can get. As far as the Freedom of Information Act, when you make a request, say on these Clinton emails, how long does it take to get a response? Well, it depends on how forthcoming government wants to be. Under law, they're supposed to respond to you within 20 days or so. Uh, we're willing sometimes to because we recognize the government takes longer than even the law allows and we don't want to sue over every request. Uh, but often we just have to sue just to get them to tell us yes or no uh, because they ignore the request completely. And the more politically sensitive a res uh, re request, the more difficult it is to get information in a timely way. And that's why we're often in court. Uh, we've sued the administration over 300 times to get access to information under the Freedom of Information Act. When you get the information, is it highly redacted, or it depends on the nature of the email? <laughs> it depends. If it's, a, if it's a topic of national security, it'll be highly redacted. Uh, a lot of the redactions, unfortunately, have to do with what they call deliberate process, which is the decision-making prior to a decision being made in the back and forth. And as you might imagine, that would be the most interesting material, uh, but it's often redacted. And that's something that the uh, administration isn't required to do, but they choose to do it. Uh, which is at odds with its transparency promises. This is Dina from Fayetteville, North Carolina, on our independent line. Good morning. Good morning. I have a qu I have two questions. The first question is, those lawyers that the, uh, the Clinton have, are they the same lawyers that are going to be representing her, even though they knew that she was deleting emails and had privilege to confidential information, even though they were it with that capacity to be into those emails. And the second question is, with the Benghazi email that she sent her daughter, uh, Chelsea, tell her, telling her that she, that we were under attack and then lied to the people, is, wasn't that enough information to get her indicted? <laughs> Uh, I think it was scandalous. I don't think it was enough to get her indicted. Uh, and about her, Mrs. Clinton's lawyers, um, her lawyers hand, the lawyers arguing on her behalf personally also uh, looked at the emails. And um, I don't know if they deleted them or not. It's unclear how that material was deleted. Uh, but you know, they, uh, they did have access to the emails the caller is concerned about. And other people have expressed a concern about their access to the emails and whether they should have had the access they were given by Mrs. Clinton. 
But evidently, the Justice Department doesn't think any of that's a big deal. The, for the, uh, the written statements that you'll receive from Mrs. Clinton, do, does she pen them herself? Is it vetted through lawyers? How does that work? Well, you know, my guess is the lawyers will help her compose the answers, but in the end, she's responsible for them. And they're the statement that the, for the purposes of the court, and everyone should assume that when she gives the answers, they're her answers under oath under penalty of perjury. So uh, there are answers that she's directly responsible for, and they're supposed to be hers personally, yes. Uh, Richard in Louisville, Kentucky, thank you for calling. Uh, Republican line, you're up next. Hi. In, in the 90s, when Bill Clinton was president of the United States, there was a guy named Rich. Mark Rich, was that his name, who mm -hmm. fled the country? Yes. Can somebody? Yes. Okay. Uh, now, I don't know what his crimes were, but it was bad enough to where he had to leave his country and go overseas. And a couple of days before Bill Clinton left, he pardoned the guy. Now I find out this morning that there's a guy named Shiguri. Is Am I saying that name right? I guess, I think. <laughs> a, business, a business partner of Mark Rich? Yeah, I read that subsequent to our uh, release of the Shigori emails that uh, tied the uh, Shigori to the foundation and to the State Department, yes. Email. I don't know if it's true, but I've, I've read reports about that, yeah. That, that this guy is a partner of Mark Rich, and, and now he's making dealings with Hillary Clinton while she was in the State Department and gave money to the fa uh, Clinton Foundation. I, you know, this past January, I changed parties. I was a Democrat for 44 years, and I changed parties to the Republican Party so that I could vote in the Republican primary here in Kentucky. I voted for Ted Cruz, but I promise you, I will not vote Democrat because of this terrible, terrible way that Bill and Hillary Clinton has treated this country. I am ashamed to say that I was a Democrat. Thank you very much. I, I think it's just uh, interesting that uh, Shigori is someone that uh, Bill Clinton would even pal around with, let alone uh, the State Department would give the time of day to. It's, I it's just would. incredibly corrupt. You th I, th uh, so tell me again, did the meeting ever take place, do we know of? It's not clear. And uh, the ambassador, the former ambassador to Lebanon, who, Miss Abedin, who was uh, in, uh, the subject of the query by Shigori and, and Doug Band, uh, uh, said that she was going to reach out to this gentleman, and he he said, "I don't remember a meeting with him, or it didn't happen." But you know, our view is we want the documents, so we'll be asking for documents about that meeting and seeing if it did happen or what was the follow-up, if any, with it. Our line for Democrats, Melvin. Good morning from Mount Pleasant, South Carolina. Go ahead. Good morning. How are you? Good morning. Yeah, um, I'm a Democrat, and I am an American part of the American people that you're talking about. Uh, it seems you're wasting a whole lot of time on these emails, and the more you guys talk about it, the more you make us vote for Hillary even more. I mean, gosh, the lady's been on there for 11 hours. You just pick and pick and pick. There's nothing there. I mean, are you guys that big of a sore loser that you just can't accept defeat? Won't you leave the lady alone and let's make the, the time you spent trying to worry about some dumb emails, we could be doing progress with this country. You need to get off it and get a life. Have a good day, buddy. Thank you. We think the public interest demands accountability uh, for Mrs. Clinton's misconduct on this email scandal and uh, partisans who support her uh, may be turned off by that, but this is a nonpartisan enterprise and we'd be doing this whether or not Mrs. Clinton would be running for office. And, so, and I have a feeling we'd be having a more easier time getting access to these emails if she weren't running for the president. But as a result of her running for the president, it's impacting the process in an improper way. He called your efforts a waste of time over dumb emails, and those were his words. Well, if it was a, you know, this waste of time has led to the shutting down of the Clinton Global Initiative. That was announced after the release of the Shigori emails. It led to the foundation announcing that it will long, no longer take foreign donations. There's been a lot of back and forth about whether that's a serious proposal as opposed to why they're not doing that already or why they didn't do that before. Uh, but if it, was, if, if it was just Judicial Watch and we didn't have anything to, uh, uh, anything to back this up, why would the Clintons personally change their foundation in response to our disclosures? It's an 
it's a testament to the fine, our fine work, admittedly, I think, but it's also a testament to the fact these emails are really concerning to people across the political spectrum. And you see editorials across the political spectrum. Uh, it was the Boston Globe, I think, who called on the Clintons to shut the foundation down completely and stop taking donations. Uh, so, I, you know, they're no friends of Judicial Watch editorially. Uh, Thomas from Humble, Texas, Independent Line. Hi. Hey, how's it going, man? Hey, uh, you remember when the congressman said it was, uh, uh, the investigation was there because they wanted to bring down her poll numbers? Mm -hmm. But anyway, I just want to ask you, I have a bet with a friend of mine. Where did the uh, attack take place in Benghazi? Was it at the uh, CIA headquarters or safe house? Well, there was, there was a, uh, uh, go ahead, I'll answer it if you want me, but uh, just there was an attack at the uh, special mission compound where it was a quasi-diplomatic facility, and then later at the CIA annex that was supporting uh, our operations there, and it was about a mile or so away. Thomas, go ahead if you had a follow-up. Yeah, was there ever a stand-down uh, order given? Yes, there it was. Uh, the contract, the CIA support, uh, 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 security people said there was a stand-down order, and of course the military was never deployed. Uh, we don't need to tell someone to stand down if you never tell them to get going. Who was the order given by? <clears throat> um, there was at least a stand-down order allegedly given by the CIA annex chief, uh, and uh, there was a delay leaving also out of Benghazi. Uh, we found through emails just recently that, um, and the committee found these emails as well, <coughs> as a result of our work, uh, that um, Mrs. Clinton and the Obama administration was offered troops uh, to deploy to Libya immediately after the attack took place. Uh, that offer wasn't taken up, at least in a timely way, and if they had been taken up in a timely way, uh, arguably those troops could have gotten there in time to at least support the men who came under attack several hours later at the CIA annex. Two men were killed there. Uh, James up next. James from Washington State, Democrats line. You're, go ahead. Good morning. Good morning. I just was wondering how many specific FOIA requests you have made against the Clintons in your professional life. Oh, dozens probably. I can't keep track of them. Um, but uh, the Clinton email issue has led to many, many Freedom of Information Act requests and lawsuits. Um, but it's an unprecedented cover-up in many respects. And, uh, you know, we do remember, you know, we're on, we're, I'm not uh, embarrassed about our record going after Clinton corruption. Uh, during the Clinton years, you had abuse of the IRS, the selling of the White House to foreign interests such as the Chinese Communists, uh, threats and intimidation. Uh, against witnesses uh, who were seen as adverse to Mrs. Clinton and Mr. Clinton, uh, abuse of the FBI, uh, terrible record of corruption during the Clinton years. And um, one of the things we highlighted when Mrs. Clinton came in as Secretary of State is we warned the Obama administration, we warned the American public that this corruption would continue as she was made Secretary of State, and we were proven right. Uh, Kingston, Georgia. Sam, good morning. You're next. Republican line. Good morning. Morning. Good morning. morning. Thanks for taking my call. Uh, and thanks for your work, Mr. Fenton. You're welcome. Uh, I have just a couple of statements here. I, I know when I, I, I was in the military for 24 years, and when I got access to classified information, I had to sign a disclosure statement. And I don't remember what the form was, but it specifically said that if I mishandled that information, that I would be subject to 10 years in prison or $10,000 fine or both. And I was just wondering if when Ms. Uh, Clinton was signed into Secretary of State. Did she have to sign that? And, you know, do, can you get access to that? I don't remember if she signed it initially. I have it. I recall she did, but I, 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 I'm hesitant. Well, I'm on saying it on TV, but I, I think she may have signed something initially. Uh, there's also a uh, leaving the agency form, uh, which has similar type language. Uh, she didn't sign that one going out, though. Um, she took those documents. She had no right to take them, and some of them were classified and confidential. Uh, it was just an unbelievable violation of law, uh, and uh, and you and you call it right in the sense that lower level officials have suffered severe consequences for arguably lesser crimes related to the mishandling of classified and government information. The former Secretary of State Colin Powell and you saying that Hillary Clinton's campaign was trying to use him and his practices as Secretary of State to help justify her actions. Are there parallels between how she practiced email use and Colin Powell did? 
No, I mean, you know, I, just to be clear, Colin Powell shouldn't have been doing government business on his private email account either. Well, that was a Yahoo type account. He didn't set up a government. He didn't set up a server to do his private business or his government business. He didn't, uh, for the most part, do classified, uh, purposefully do classified. Uh, 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 Inf uh, business on that system and when Mrs. Clinton came into office they did have a non-classified email system for her to use that she could have used but she declined to use. Do you think you'll we'll see practices of private email use change because of this instance in this story? I hope so but it continues. Uh, you had Ash Carter who was caught doing it even after the scandal broke. You had Jay Johnson and the Department of Homeland Security who was given waivers to uh, access uh, personal email versus uh, via government computers, uh, despite security concerns. Uh, uh, y you know, the government doesn't want you to know what they're doing, and that's true. Republican or Democrat administrations, and the uh, widespread use of email and other uh, internet media like uh, text messaging is a challenge because the government officials know there are ways of keeping things from us and so we just have to keep on tracking it. Oh, we'll take one more call for our guest and that is Sam. Sam is in Kingston, Georgia on our line for Republicans. Sam, go ahead. Yeah, and well, I had one other thing. Also, Ms. Clinton has, at that position, she has individual classification authority. That's so, right. I mean, that means that on her very own initiative, I mean, on her, with her very own eyes, she's supposed to be responsible for recognizing anything that is classified. I That's mean, you right. don't get to that level without, you know, without playing ignorant that you don't know what information is classified and what information isn't. I mean, she has individual classification authority. Gotcha, so, Gotcha. Yeah, it's, I think, technically called original classification authority, and there are not many government officials who have it, relatively speaking, but someone like Mrs. Clinton's position is someone who's supposed to recognize classified material and treat it accordingly and has special obligations uh, or heightened obligations uh, to make sure that classified material is handled at all times appropriately. Walk us through what's next for Judicial Watch on this matter from today on. Well, we'll be composing and sending questions, uh, uh, presumably to Mrs. Clinton. We'll be debating with the State Department how quickly we get the emails that the FBI recovered, the deleted Clinton emails, and there'll be more emails coming out, as I said this week, uh, talking about the Clinton Foundation's connections to the State Department that uh, will only add to the questions and concerns. And remind our viewers why you're before a judge today again. Uh, we're before a judge today to talk about uh, the emails that the FBI recovered from Mrs. Clinton's deleted, assist, uh, deleted emails and found elsewhere that she didn't turn over to the State Department. The FBI has turned those emails over to the State Department. The State Department is supposed to turn them over to us under, under um, litigation and we want to know when we're going to get those emails. And so that's what's going to be talked about at court today. And we're told there are at least 15,000 documents or so that uh, they have to review. Tom Fitton is the president of Judicial Watch and the email or the website if you want to look uh, about what they're doing and uh, the, the things they've done with uh, Secretary of State Clinton, judicialwatch.org is that website. Mr. Fitton, thanks for your time. Thank you, Pedro. As you heard our guest say, uh, he has to go to court to take care of these things. We are going to continue on with calls that you may have concerning the email practices of the former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton. Uh, he won't be here to respond to them, but at least you can make comments about them. And here's how you can do so. Uh, Republicans, 202-748-8001. Democrats, 202-748-8000. And for independents, 202-748-8002. Again, you can make comments to the email practices uh, topic and uh, even though our guest isn't going to be here, but you can still make your uh, comment or statement. Uh, we'll continue on our conversation with Gwen from Birmingham, Alabama. Democrats lying. Gwen, thanks for calling. Go ahead. Yes, good morning. You know what? I don't know whether uh, a lot of your callers are, are, are familiar with the Judicial Watch. They have, they have been after the claims for years. Yes, they have. It's nothing new with Judicial Watch and Larry Clayman. I'm very familiar with him. And about the emails, I'm, I'm like Bernie Sanders. I'm sick and tired of them. So I don't know why we're still hopping on the emails. The uh, uh, FBI, James Comer, and the FBI said Hillary didn't have anything to be prosecuted for. And when he made the statement, Tom Fitton, 
that they have been after the Clintons for years, but what have they found to prosecute them for? It, 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 it's not whether, whether that I've been accused of murder. It, it, it's whether I've been convicted of murder. Hillary Clinton and Bill Clinton have not been convicted of any crime that these Republicans and Judicial Watch have brought up against them. Hillary Clinton will not be prosecuted for these emails, so they need to get over it and get off it and move on. The Republican Party is holding up progress in the country, and I don't know why these people that's calling in and people in America don't see this. We need something done in this country. We need something done for poverty. We need something done for our roads and infrastructure, our bridges and, and whatever. We don't need all of these uh, our scandals that they keep trying to bring up against the Clintons. I don't understand this. We, we need to get over this and move on. That okay, okay. Let's hear from Sean, Lakeland, Florida, Independent Line. Sean, good morning. Good morning. How you doing there, sir? Fine. Thank you. Go ahead. I really wanted to talk to that guy. Uh, Apologies. What, what, he, he had to go to court, but that's why we're continuing on the conversation uh, to make your statement or comment, even though he's not going to be here. I mean, I understand, but what is it? Judicial Watch? Wow, mm -hmm. what a name. Uh, it just seems so odd because as I'm an independent, so I really am no fan of Clinton. I'm really no fan of Trump. Uh, I'm really no fan of the left wing or the right wing. It's the same bird. Um, my question, my thing that I wanted to ask him is that from my standpoint, the whole, everything is messed up from Congress. These are, these are people that they make deals that affect money all through their career. And then they get out of their career and then they make a bunch of money because off of the deals that they made while they were working. And a lot of them do it while they're working. And it's not just congressmen, it's presidents. Nobody talks about all the money that George Bush made after he got out, all of his buddies and the things that he did. To me, that's who <laughs> everybody should be having a big deal about. I think that guy should be brought up on charges. He started a war for nothing. Nobody even says anything, but then that's how come people are so frustrated and they go these stupid emails. Because in the concept of someone just looking at this, you're talking about somebody who did emails and a couple of people got killed at an embassy, which is bad. But people got killed at embassies when George Bush was in charge. Nobody says anything about that. But let's, go next, let's go next to Dorothy, Portland, Oregon. Dorothy, good morning. Go ahead. Uh, yes, I was listening to that man, too, and uh, if he is um, uh, non-partial, uh, uh, non well, then, uh, I don't know, so is David Duke, you know, because everything, everything he had to say, hello? You're on, go ahead. Everything he had to say was uh, he didn't he didn't verify anything. There was no contrast to anything he ever did as far as Republicans were concerned. If he was by if he was nonpartisan, why is it that everything is on uh, Hillary Clinton and they've been watching her for what eleven fifty nine years? You know, uh, it's just absolutely ridiculous. And it sounds to me that they kind of loaded the phones again. With with people, I'm not going to be a Democrat. I was a Democrat for a hundred years. I quit because Hillary. Well, Hillary has done nothing compared to what the Republicans have done to us. Look at the thousands of people George Bush and Cheney got murdered uh, over there uh, in a war because somebody insulted his daddy. Look at Donald Trump doing deals with the Russians, and he won't mention that. Does that not matter? He's asking to be president of the United States and he and his cohorts are doing deals with the Russians and the Russians are acting on their behalf and supporting them. Come on, give America a break that this man was so corrupt until I don't even understand why you guys had him on the show. Thank you. Uh, David from New York, Republican Line. You're next. Hi. Yes, hi. Good morning. Um, I, I have a uh, just a real big statement. I really think that the Justice Department is crooked. I think that the people that put uh, Kumi in charge of the FBI and in the investigation came straight out and said, we have the evidence. 
but we're not going to prosecute. And it has to fall down on the Justice Department. The Justice Department has to take this seriously and prosecute without any judgment towards anybody or any bias towards anybody and just look at the facts and prosecute. Thank you. James Comey is the topic of an editorial at the Los Angeles Times that came out on August the 19th, taking a look at the FBI. And the editors of the Los Angeles Times say this, We understand why Comey departed from the usual practice in going public with this decision not to recommend any criminal charges against Clinton or her aides, and exercise in transparency that continue with his appearance before the House Oversight and Government Reform Committee last month to answer questions about his recommendation. Former Secretary of State Clinton, after all, is a presidential candidate and a former member of the president's cabinet. But Mr. Comey indulged Congress too much by turning over documents relating to interviews with Mrs. Clinton and other witnesses, a step that is unusual, if not unprecedented, even if this information doesn't leak, a big if, given the partisan passion surrounding the issue, turning over to a highly politicized congressional committee, the content of FBI interviews could make witnesses in sensitive cases think twice about cooperating with investigators. Woody from Clinton, uh, Colton, California, Independent Line. Hi there. Hi. I just have to I want to tell her that, you know, a lot of people are, are overlooking that the reason why she can't answer any of these questions about the emails or anything else is if she, if she let people, if she let the FBI director know for a second that she understood something as basic as what a classified document looked like, she would be guilty of the, of the crime everyone's accusing her of. So she literally had to play dumb. And she has to continue to play dumb all the way to the White House on knowing what a classified document looks like. Otherwise, she's guilty. Otherwise, she'd go to jail. And it's kind of a sad thing for the first, you know, president to have to play dumb. But it's what she has to do to stay out of jail. Uh, Los Angeles, California. Good morning, uh, Larry. Line for Democrats. Hi. Good morning, Pedro. How you doing, sir? Fine, thank you. Go ahead. Pedro, uh, I'm uh, calling in on the Democratic line, and I'm a Democrat, but, uh, you know, I don't care where the corruption is coming from, whether it's Democrat or Republican. Uh, I'm, I'm willing to look at the evidence and let the chips fall where they may. And I have to say that uh, Mrs. Clinton, uh, you know, I, was, I worked for the government for 30 years, six in the military, active in reserve duty, and also about 28 years as a contractor. And I had to sign a, what they call a non-disclosure uh, document, and it's called a Form 9. And, you know, you can be fined or you can even face, uh, uh, you know, uh, incarceration if you violate that act. And, you know, Pedro, there's things that you do not discuss or put on emails. People try to talk around classified. That's wrong. You're not supposed to even come close to discussing or transmitting anything that may be of a classified nature. I dealt with secret, confidential, uh, classified. I never dealt with top secret or skiff information. But you know when you're coming close to that line. And I was on duty, Pedro, 24-7, even when I went on vacation. So you it, know, people would call me. It sounds like you're supportive of activities such as Judicial Watch. Absolutely, Pedro. Look what happened to Mr. Richard Nixon. He denied, denied, denied all the way to the point where he was firing people to keep people from disclosing information. And, you know, you have to be honest, come clean. And one last thing I'd like to say, Pedro, you know, they put so much emphasis on the presidency and the president doing this, that, and the other. But when you get down to it, all three branches of government have to be held accountable for a lot of the missteps and things that go wrong in this country. Again, we're getting your thoughts on the practices of email by uh, former Secretary of State uh, Hillary Clinton. Our guest previous had to leave, but we're getting your thoughts continuing up into our uh, next guest segment in about five minutes. Gail from Kentucky, Republican line. Hi there. Go ahead. Hi. I just got a comment. Uh, if, if there isn't anything in the emails that proves she's guilty, why did she hide them? Why did she try to get rid of them? 
why don't you just bring them out and prove that everybody's wrong? Well, let's okay. take one more call on the topic. Mark, Novelty, Ohio, Independent Line, you're the last call on this. Go ahead. Yes, good morning, and thank you for C-SPAN. Um, I can't hear anything. You're on. Go ahead. Oh, there you go. That's good. Yeah, um, this whole thing is, you know, everybody looks over one of the most important pieces of evidence, and that evidence is the fact that the Republicans shut down security. They voted against further security for Benghazi. You don't think with all the hacking and stuff goes on with our great computers, you know, that the other side found that out and took advantage of it? And then to add to that, Colin Powell, Wolfowitz, and uh, Condoleezza Rice all did the same thing, all right? Now we've got ISIS, which Dick Cheney and George W. Bush created. And how many tens of thousands of people innocent or not, have died because of that. Uh, this guy talks about Clinton's and corruption, but there's never been any corruption found in anything they've gone after. This guy is the most partisan person that you guys keep bringing this subject up, and we need to move on. Let's talk about something that will enhance our country, such as unconstitutional school funding. Okay, Mark, last call on the topic. We will change topics now, ask and talk about young voters in election 2016, the issues that are resonating most with them. We'll learn more from Kei Kawashima Ginsburg of the Center for Information and Research on Civic Learning and Engagement. And later on in the program, add the name Evan McMullen to the list of people running for the office of President of the United States. You'll meet him later as he discusses why he's in and what he hopes to achieve. All that is Washington Journal continues after this. Thank you.